Hello and guten Tag. My name is Martin Krausch and I'm a senior systems engineer at Brokey Germany. So, as usually, first of all, my apologies to all native speaking English persons for my maybe hands in their funny sounding German accent. Today, I would like to give you an introduction to a technology called stacking, which gives you the possibility to combine several physical boxes into one large logical box. Stacking is a quite common technology on the market, but especially the feature set of Brocade brings you tremendous advantages, which I would like to show to you now. Why should you consider to use stacking or an even more enhanced technology like Campus Fabric? Well, first of all, you have all the benefits of a classic chassis design, which means a single point of management, high availability, easy software upgrades, high scalability and a high performance. In addition, we have reduced upfront investment because basically you only have to buy what you need. With a chassis design, mostly you have a large chassis with only a few line cards in it. So you have to invest for the chassis, for the management module, for the chassis fabric modules, for the power supplies and so on and so on without using all these capabilities when buying a chassis solution. Distributed configuration means that you can set two neighboring stack units up to 10 kilometers apart. You have also reduced power and cooling and very flexible deployment because you can place the systems as a standalone system, uh, as top of the rack system, as a classical stack, or you can even build a so called campus fabric. Although this video covers stacking and not campus fabric, I would like to give you a short overview of what Campus Fabric means. So basically, it's a more scalable design which scales up to over 1700 Ethernet ports. It can combine different systems from all ICX 7000 series switches and routers and has also a simplified management. If you are interested into the Campus Fabric design, please have a look at our Brocade YouTube videos covering this topic. Brocade ICX stacking technology brings a whole bunch of advantages to you. So first of all, we use standard Ethernet ports and cables and we don't use proprietary stacking connections. So that means you don't have to purchase optional stacking modules. In addition, there's no stacking license and therefore you can configure stacking at no additional cost. As I've already mentioned, we support long distance stacking for distances of up to 10 kilometers. And we can combine up to 12 units within one logical stack. We also support in service software upgrade ISSU, which means that you can upgrade the software to the whole stack and then reload the stack unit by unit. So you can avoid unwanted downtimes when using other stack technologies where you have to reload the complete stack at one time. We also support hitless failover of the management, which means that whenever one stack unit fails, another one will take over the task immediately without any disruption of the data traffic. We support high redundancy due to link aggregation distributed across multiple stack units. So if you have redundant connection to different units within the stack and one stack member or even one port goes down, the attached station or device can send data traffic to the other still established connection. A very important point is that you don't need redundancy protocols like spanning tree or VRP within the stack because the stack itself is a large logical system with already implemented redundancies. So now let's have a look at the Brocade stack architecture. First of all, we have to define so-called stacking ports. A stacking port is a physical interface on a stack unit that connects a stacking link. And a stacking link is basically a point-to-point -point link that exchanges proprietary packets between neighboring stack units. In addition, you can also configure so-called trunked stacking ports. A trunk stacking port consists of multiple stacking ports and is treated as one logical link. 
so it provides more bandwidth and better resiliency than individually connected ports. In order to set up a trunk stacking port, you first have to set up a logical stack and then you can use the command multi-stack trunk. Within the bouquet stack, we have three different stack unit roles. The first one is the most important one, the active controller. The active controller synchronizes configuration to the other stack members. It also downloads software images to all stack members and controls the console and management access to the whole logical stack. The next one is the so-called standby controller. The standby controller takes over immediately all tasks from the active controller in case the active controller goes down. Last but not least, you have so-called stack members. And these are all units which are no active or standby controllers. The unit roles are defined via the unit priorities. So a unit with a higher priority is more likely to be elected as an active controller. The unit priority value can be between 0 and 255 with a priority of 255 being the highest one. The default priority for a standby controller or an active controller is 128. At any point you can change the priority value of each stack unit with the command priority. There are three different methods how to build up a stack. The most common one is a secure setup utility, which I will show you later on. Second one is the automatic stack configuration. Here you have to enter all configuration information into the unit which will become the active controller and set its priority to be the highest. Enabling stacking on the active controller, the stack forms automatically, but this method requires to start with clean units. Here is an example how the configuration on the active controller looks like. The last one is the manual stack configuration. Here you have to configure every unit individually and enabling stacking on each unit. The unit with the highest priority becomes the active controller and ID assignment is determined by the sequence in which the units will be physically connected. Before we can start configuring the boxes for stacking, we have to connect them, for example, via Tangic Ethernet connections. For long distance stacking, you can use SFP Plus optics, uh, which support stacking distances for up to 10 kilometers, and for short range stacking, you can use such kind of so-called Twinex cable. So, how do they work? Twinex cable have already built-in SFP Plus optics. So, you just can plug it in here, for example, to connect port 1 to the other port 1 and for redundancy reasons second one from port number three to the other port number three. Before setting up the stack, just a few best practices guidelines. First of all, please make sure, especially for this ICX7250 series, that you have loaded the correct POD licenses in order to enable 10 gigabit connections on the default stacking parts. Secondly, please also make sure that you have loaded the correct software versions on all stack members just in order to avoid possible feature mismatches. Last but not least, as long as stacking is not enabled, the boxes behave like normal switches or routers. That means if you connect physically the boxes via redundant connections, you would create a loop. To avoid this, it's a good idea to enable, for example, spanning tree in the corresponding VLAN, as you can see here. So, as the boxes have been powered on 
and you have connected them via redundant uh, stacking connections on their default stacking ports, um, you can start creating the stack. How to do this? Change to the configure terminal mode. And first of all, you can say stack enable. There are many ways to configure stacking. You can configure it manually, uh, but a good way is just to use a kind of stacking wizard. How to do this? You have to go back from the configure terminal mode to the enable mode and type in stack secure setup. Return. And now you get several questions, yes, no, say yes, say yes, and now the stack automatically will be created, all logical stack numbers will be named by the system and we will see what kind of stack we have here. Just type show stack. And you see it's not yet created, you have to wait a little bit, we'll just skip this here. And after some time, check it again, by typing show stack, you can see now that the stack has been configured automatically with two stack members. As you have seen, long distance stacking and the flexible port configuration feature set brings tremendous advantages when setting up a brocade stack. Within my next video, part 4, I would like to introduce the implementation of VLANs, virtual LANs, and IP routing interfaces, as basically all IC7000 series switches support also routing. For today, I would like to thank you for your time and say goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.